Okay, so I'm going to show how to disassemble an HP Pavilion 13-A010DX. So first what you want to do is remove all the screws from the bottom. There will be um, five screws hidden underneath some plastic and rubber covers. So the two rubber legs here will have screws hidden under it. They're towards the hinge area. And then there will be a rubber cover here. So you remove that screw and two plastic caps here to remove um, that you need to remove. Um, so to remove those, you can use like a needle or um, I used a small flathead screwdriver. Um, so yeah, make sure to remove these and then you can remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen screws. Once you remove the screws, what you can do to make it easier is you can open it all the way, um, flip it all the way back since it's a 360 screen. And then you can get your nails or a pry tool between the two um, parts here. So the gray and the silver part, the dark gray. Um, and you just pull on it like that. You'll get the middle to pop up. Once you get the middle to pop up, you can get your nails or the pry tool and slide it along underneath while pulling the plastic outwards like this. Um, that will get the clips to release. So you just do that all the way around that okay. all the way around okay. it's tough to do this with one hand but, uh, here you go so once you get all the way around there the back near the hinges is a little bit more tough because it doesn't go all the way around um, as one solid piece up here. So what you got to do is you got to hold on the corner here and then kind of pry this up. Let me see if I can do that from here. Oh, there we go. It actually just popped out. So while you're pulling on it, you can just pry on the back here and it will pop out like that. This whole piece will come with it. So just make sure go along. There you go. And then be careful because there's cables underneath, so be careful not to pull it out too far. To remove those, what I like to do is tilt it up like this. Sorry. And then lean this over on my stomach or wherever. Um, so that way the cables don't get pulled too hard. So you can see it has these little latches here. So what you do is you actually flip it up like that. Flip up both of them. Once you've got them flipped up, you can wiggle the cables out. Just like that. So now you got this piece, you can set it aside. Um, once you got that, let me see here. So what you want to do, there's going to be a whole bunch of screws under here as well. So um, depending what you're removing, there's the power button here. I'm not going to remove that. But if your power button's not working, you can replace that. Um, the cable, just flip these switches, um, the latches up. And you can remove this. So same thing, just kind of wiggle them. Make sure you keep them the same way. This one's not as important, you can put it the other way, but um, just so that the bends in the cable kind of stay the same and doesn't get bent too much in different directions, um, keep them the same position. Um, so this one is for the LCD, just flip that up. And then there's little notches here that hold it in place, so you have to kind of lift it up at an angle and then pull it out. And then you got the wireless card here. So this is, um, you got to remove this or you can't remove the board. So just pull up on the back of the cables like this. Make sure not to like pry from the front or around the sides because you can actually damage it the way they design it. There's actually like little slits in the metal that allow it to bend that way a little bit easier. So just pull it up like that. All right. And then remove the wireless card. There's one screw here. I actually took all the screws out already to make it easier to do one-handed. Um, so yeah, so set that aside. Then you got another connector here. Um, I believe this is for the touch screen. It might be also for like the webcam and things like that. But the, depending which one, one of these are for the LCD and one's for like the touch screen and the other things in there. So then you got the um, power connector. The DC jack so you just grab the little parts that stick out there and then kind of wiggle it and you can get that out okay then the hard drive there would be two screws here so you remove those two screws flip up the latch here 
Okay, there you go. Once you get the latch up, you can actually pull this up. There you go. And to remove the hard drive, I like to use the metal parts that were being held in by the screws. Lift that up, and then you can actually slide this forward and out. All right, if you want to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD or put another hard drive in, that's how you would do that. These don't have any screws. You just pull these, um, put, pull these aside and to remove this connector, um, just like every other SATA connector, you just pull this plastic piece. Be careful with the um, connector. You don't want to damage the, the cable here. Okay, so just set that aside. This one I'm going to be upgrading to an SSD and also um, adding RAM. But I put the RAM in already, so just to make sure I knew the whole process to show. So then this cable you have to remove. Remember, you have to lift up these latches, so just pull it back. And this, they actually label this. Um, this side goes to the motherboard, so you can see it has like this MB here. And this one goes to the, I don't know why they call it DB, but um, daughter board, I guess. Um, so that, you can leave that um, there. Um, so this actually has the connector for the speakers that run across. And then there's um, the audio jack here and a USB port. So if these break for some reason, you could always replace this small board. Um, so as for the screws, uh, once you got all these connectors, oh, you can remove the battery. Normally you would actually remove the battery first, but I forgot. Um, but if you want to be safe, you can remove the battery first and then hold the power button. Um, but in this case, since the, well, actually the power button's here, so if you want, you can do it that way, but you'd have to leave this cable connected. Um, you would do that to drain any power, so if the capacitors hold any power, um, that will prevent any power from like going where it shouldn't go. Um, but yeah, so once you got that, there's the screws here that you want to remove. So there'll be, let me go from the start, there'll be one screw here, and then one screw, um, was it here? Yeah, there's actually one screw here. Uh, right now the fan connector's on underneath, but there was a, the fan connectors will be on top of this, and there'll be a screw here. And then there'll be two screws up here, and then you'll have another screw here, another screw here. You'll have uh, one screw here, and then you'll have one screw here. I think I already said that one. We already moved that. Then you'll have one screw in this corner up here, and then another screw down in this corner here. So once you get the screws out and you disconnect the battery connector, um, this audio cable for the speakers you can lift up so it's not in the way when you pull on this tab to remove the battery. And just lift that out. Be careful because the cable will be kind of caught there. So you just gotta wiggle it out, okay, just like that. Once you got the battery out, and you can actually lift out this. Um, on this one, the cable for the fan was really difficult to remove. It might be easier now that I already removed it, but I like to just use my nails and then wiggle this. Oh, yeah, much easier. So once you get that, you can actually lift the fan out, just like that. If you need to replace the fan or clean it, you can do that. Um, Let's see, they should have a model number here. So they have a HP part number here. Um, let's see, 7795980001. So if you need to replace the fan, set that aside. I already cleaned the dust out of here, so it's always nice to clean the dust out when you get the chance. So to remove this board, you actually just lift this up. Make sure, check all the connectors first are disconnected so you won't be yanking anything out. But uh, if you pull lightly and you feel some resistance, then just check around for why it's stuck. So this board, you lift up at an angle, and then you can actually pull it out like that. And then there's the RAM here. So the processor on this isn't replaceable, um, but you can upgrade two slots of RAM, two sticks of RAM. So this one only had one stick when they brought it in um, to replace it or to put a new one. Um, to remove it, you push these two clips out outwards like that, um, and the stick of RAM will actually pop up on its own, just like that. To put them back in, you just put it at an angle like that, and then once you get it in there, you just press it down. You should feel both sides click. Same thing with this one. I already did that, so I'll just push it back down. Okay. Let's see. 
here. Oh, let me double check this one. It's being weird. Okay. And just push that back in. Once you got those clipped in place, okay, then you can just put the board back in. So make sure to check that you got everything back in place. So put this at the angle. I'm not going to do the complete reassembly because um, I have to clone the hard drive to an SSD and then put it back. But you pretty much should have an, the idea just from me disassembling it. So remember to reconnect this. Uh, you just line it up. It's hard to do this with the camera in my face. But uh, just line it up. And then usually I'll use like my nail to get the edge of this and push that, push that in. And then you can check both sides. Okay. And remember the um, wireless card. Make sure not to mix up the screws. So just like the RAM, you have to put it in at an angle like that. Um, and then when you put the screw in, you can push it down just like this. Okay. Got that. And you got this connector. Make sure you reroute it through the places where it was before. It actually goes between these two posts here. So just reconnect it. Okay, just like that. Once you reconnect it, put the latch back down. And then make sure it, the cabling goes in the right place where it should. All right, and put the wireless connectors, the antennas. So this, you just make sure line it up. It shouldn't move around once you have it lined up, and then you can press down. Um, don't press too hard um, if it's not lined up, because you can actually damage these connectors pretty easily. So just be careful with those. Okay. So line it up, and then press down. There you go. Just like that. And then you got this LCD connector here. It actually even says it there on the board. Lift that up and slide it in and latch it back down. All right. So make sure you have it in this order. The fan you can do after the battery. So that way you, you make sure the connector is on top. It's a little bit easier. Make sure um, the speaker cable that you hold it out of the way. So the battery can fall back in place. Just like that. Okay. And then you can put that back down. And the battery you can connect last, um, and the fan, grab the fan. If you want, you can do the fan after because you're gonna have to put the screw back in here. So you don't have to reconnect that until the end. Um, then grab the little cable for the power button and put that back in. Okay. Latch that down other side put that back in okay I like how all these connectors are the same style with the latches sometimes they'll use ones where you have to pull them back instead of these like flipping covers so you got that make sure you get this cable okay Usually I'll like make sure to keep pressure on it while I latch it to make sure it's plugged in all the way. So you got that, then you got these two pieces and the hard drive. Since I'm going to be replacing the hard drive with an SSD, that's all I'm going to show. The rest after that, you just reconnect the keyboard as like before. Um, it's easiest to hold it with this side open and then you can actually, while you're holding it at that angle, you can actually put the keyboard one first since it's longer. Once you get the keyboard one in, then you can slide, uh, you can let the cover down a little bit more so you have more slack and then you can put this one in. And then after that, make sure to plug the battery in. And also don't forget the screws, of course. But um, yeah. And then once you got that, you can just press the cover back down and it'll snap all back into place, put the rest of the screws in and you're good to go. Usually before putting the bottom screws in, I'll test everything, make sure it works okay. Um, that way you don't have to remove all those screws again if if you forgot to disconnect, uh, to reconnect one of these connector cables. So 
that's pretty much it. Um, you can double check speakers, this board, the fan, make sure that's connected, the power button, LCD connector, the wireless card, this and the touchscreen connector and the DC jack, make sure that's plugged in underneath. And that's pretty much it. Once you got all those things connected, I don't know if I mentioned the battery, but yeah, make sure that's connected. Once you got all of that, you can power it on. Um, especially if you're changing the RAM, it's a good idea not to put all the screws in. You can probably even leave these screws out just for testing because if you didn't push the RAM in all the way or you got an incompatible RAM model or it's a faulty RAM stick, then it's gonna it's not going to boot up or it'll beep at you. And then you're going to have to take it all apart to remove the RAM and make sure that's the issue. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. All right. Uh, bye.